Okay, so in this section, we're starting, or in this video, we're starting section 4.7, which is optimization. That's basically applied maxes and mins. So we're going to be finding maxes and mins in some perhaps real world situations. So here's our situation. Maud is out of jail. She has become a farmer. And on her farm, she has a very long barn. Okay, this is the wall of the barn. Okay. And she also has a pet pig. Her pet pig is named Harold, after a friend she had, who may or may not be speaking to her at this time. And she cares deeply about Harold the pig, and so she would like to build an enclosure to keep Harold safe from any predators, but she doesn't want to wall him in too close because Harold the pig likes nothing more than to romp and frolic, and so she wants to make sure he has as much room to romp and frolic. Now, she has 1,000 feet of fencing that she can use to build this enclosure. So that's why she's going to take advantage of this very long barn that she has. We're going to suppose that it's long enough for our purposes. She's going to make one side of the enclosure against the barn so that she only has to build the other three sides. So I'm just going to call those X and Y. Okay. Obviously, this would be another X here. There's going to be a distance of length Y along the barn, but she doesn't have to build that out of fencing because the barn is already there. Okay. And her goal is going to be to maximize the enclosed area. So that Harold the pig can romp and frolic to his heart's content. Okay, so that's our basic setup. Okay, so, and we are restricting ourselves to building a rectangular pen. If she changed or played around with the shapes, that would change the problem. But she's you know, very traditional, pig pens are rectangular. Okay, so when we have a situation like this, I want to identify two things. First of all, what is the thing I am trying to optimize? Sometimes we're going to be trying to maximize something, sometimes we're going to be trying to minimize it, but I always want to say, what is my goal? Now, I actually just stated that. My goal is to maximize the area. Okay, now, that's a little bit redundant, but I would encourage you to get in the habit of making that your first step. Say, what is my goal? What's the thing I want to maximize or minimize? And then once I have that, I want to see if I can come up with an equation for that. If this is the area of a rectangle, I know that the area of a rectangle is just x times y. So I've got from geometry a formula for this. The problem that we have here is that x and y are both input variables and areas the output. That's the thing I want to maximize, but right now it's a function of two variables. If I change x, it changes the area. If I change y, it changes the area. And the class you are taking is single variable calculus. Math 3C is multivariable calculus. In Math 3C, two semesters from now, you can let that be your formula for area and try to find a maximum. But right now, we only know how to work with functions of one variable. Now, sometimes people compare this to other situations where we've seen Harold and Maud like related rates. When we had related rates, we could have multiple functions, but they were all functions of time. We had just one input variable. It was okay if we had multiple outputs, but here, I've got one output, I've got multiple inputs. So I need to say, oh, can't really have that. So I need to identify the constraint. The constraint is some limitation, often a limitation on the resources that we have, that's going to put some limits on the problem. Because if you think about it, if you wanted to maximize the area, just go buy more fencing, okay? If you go buy more fencing, you can buy, build a bigger fence, okay? So it would seem that there would be no limit on how big this could be, okay? Maybe the size of the Earth, but who knows, maybe Maud can go into space and the pig pen can include, you know, Mars and all of that too. Who knows, okay? So our constraint is that we just have a thousand feet of fencing, okay? So that's going to give me another relationship between X and Y. If I add up 
all of the sides of fencing that I have to build, that's going to add up to 1,000. 2x plus y equals 1,000. Now, in theory, of course, I could use less of the fencing. So I could make this a, an inequality, but if I'm trying to maximize things, I want that to be an inequality. If I build a pig pen and then I see that I had some extra fencing lying off to the side that I didn't use, I did not maximize the area. So we're going to come up with a constraint equation. Okay. So this is the equation that we have. Now, in this particular case, the constraint is related to the perimeter going around here. And the thing I want to maximize is the area. There's no rule that says you have to maximize area and the constraint has to be the perimeter. I could have a different situation where the area was fixed and I wanted to minimize the amount of fencing that I needed. Okay. So very often I see students struggle because they've got these two equations and they mix up the roles of which. This is the one I want to maximize. This is my constraint. So as you're working with these problems, be very strict with yourself. Start by saying, what is the thing I want to maximize or minimize? And what is my constraint? And I would clearly label which is which. So I'm even going to make a note here. I want to maximize this. OK, so if this is the thing I want to maximize, that's the thing that I want to be a function of one variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say y is 1,000 minus 2x. I can use the constraint to get a relationship between my two variables. And now I can just plug that in to my formula for area. Okay. So the area is equal to x times 1,000 minus 2x. That's an equal sign. Okay. Now I've got the area as a function of just one variable. It's a function of just one variable x. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to state my domain. That's an important step that often gets skipped. Okay. And unfortunately, it's a step that you can skip and check your answers in the back of the book and you got the right answer. Because all of the problems that you're given are problems that if you're asked to find a max, there's a max. If you're asked to find a min, there's a min. The real world isn't always so kind. Okay? Really important to state the domain because if I look at the natural domain of this function, I could multiply this out. That's 1,000x minus 2x squared. The natural domain is all real numbers. But that's not realistic because I know that I cannot have a negative amount of fencing. And I also know that I only have 1,000 feet of fencing total. Okay? So the domain is generally going to be an interval that goes from the smallest value that our variable could be to the biggest value that our variable could be. So if x is a length, the smallest anything could be is a length. So that's going to be 0. Okay? And to find the biggest it could be, people might be tempted to say 1,000. Use all the fencing there. But if I look at my picture, i got to build two x's. I'm usually going to look at the constraint equation. And I'm going to say, what's the biggest that x could be, with x and y both being non-negative, because they're amounts of fencing, that would make the constraint equation true? And the biggest that x could be is if y is at its smallest. If y is 0, 1,000 would have to equal 2x, so x would have to be 500. Okay. All right. Now, my interval is going to go from 0 to 500. I have to decide whether I want to work on an open interval or a closed interval. In this case, I could, in theory, build something where x was 0. This would be very foolish. This would be building, here's my barn. I would build a wall right against the barn. There would be no room in it for Harold to romp and frolic. If I were to build two sides of length 500 right next to each other, they would be right next to each other. There would be no room in which for Harold to romp and frolic. 
So you might say, why on earth would I choose to include those? Because that gives me a closed interval. Now I have a continuous function on a closed interval. The extreme value theorem guarantees that an absolute max and an absolute min exist and they, I know that they're going to exist at either an endpoint or a critical point. So I just have to check endpoints and critical points, pick the biggest area, and that's going to be um, my, my answer. Okay, so I usually will choose to include the endpoints if I can. I won't always be able to. It's not necessary that you do this. If you worked on an open interval, you just have to justify that you had a max a slightly different way. The next example that we'll do, we'll have to work on an open interval and we'll see how that technique works. Okay, excellent. So, I'm going to just create a table of values for x and the area, and I'm going to check my endpoints. The other thing I like about including these endpoints is they're ridiculously easy to check because they both give me an area of zero because these were degenerate rectangles. We had all base and no height, or all height and no base. Okay. So, I'm sure that the max is going to occur at a critical point, and I just need to find my critical point. Okay. So, if I take the derivative, I'm going to get a prime is 1,000 minus 4x. That is always defined. So, if 0 is equal to 1,000 minus 4x, then 4x equals 1,000, x would equal 250. So that's a critical point, okay? And I know that's going to give me a positive area, so I know for sure that that's going to be the max. Okay. Now at this point, what I want to do is make sure I answer the question. I'm not sure I phrased the question clearly at the beginning of this video. Let us suppose that the question was, find the dimensions that maximize the area. If that's the case, I'm asked to find x and y. So x would be 250 feet. Make sure you include the units in your answer. And y, since y we said was 1,000 minus 2x, y would be 500 feet. And these would be the dimensions that would maximize the area. Notice how lazy I was. I didn't even bother to write down what the maximum area was. But do read the questions carefully. Sometimes you might be asked, what is the biggest area you could enclose? In which case, you would be finding what that number was. Very often, you'll be asked, how would you do this? What do your uh, variables need to be in order to accomplish this? So always, at the end of these problems, go back, read the question, or have your teacher state the question um, so that you make sure that you're answering the question that was asked. All right, see you soon.